Greetings, my fellow Americans. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Thursday, July 19th, 2012. I didn't make this video. According to Obama, I didn't make this video. I did not build that camera. Nope. I owe something to the people that built that camera. I didn't build the internet. I owe something to the people that built the internet. I didn't build that tripod. I owe some something to the people who bought that tripod. You see, that's the kind of double speak that is pervasive in the 21st century here in America. Our politicians are saying one thing, using words, and they're distorting, perverting the meaning of these words or the ideas or the concepts. No. Obama is wrong. And the sad thing is, is he wasn't quoted out of context. And he meant what he said. He didn't misspeak. No, he meant exactly what he said. He knew what he was saying. But the problem is, he's wrong. I don't know anything to the people that built that camera. I already paid it. I paid money for that camera. I paid money for the tripod. I didn't build the garage. I built the garage. Me, Jack, and his, and Victor. I paid them to help me build that garage. I don't owe them anything else. But you see, Obama misunderstands the idea of being interconnected or dependent. You see, when you go to the grocery store, you're slightly dependent upon that farmer to grow crops or to raise animals. Okay, you're dependent upon the, the shipping companies to truck those goods in a timely and safe way to the market. You're dependent on the market to open the door and provide you with the opportunity to buy these products. But the thing is, you pay for that. So once you pay, you don't owe anything else. You see, in America, it used to be that we were self-reliant, independent, rather than dependent. We weren't looking for handouts. We were looking for, just give me the opportunity. Just, you know, get out of my way and let me do my thing and I will succeed or fail on my own merits. But th it, that's not what they're teaching anymore. And that's sad. And the prob and part of the problem is, not, and it, a big part is, is that they're using doublespeak, the Patriot Act. There was nothing patriotic about the Patriot Act. If anything, it was the anti-Patriot Act. We, we all know this. You know, anything they say they're protecting our freedom is them taking away our freedom. It's doublespeak. In fact, there's a book, Doublespeak, by William Lutz. I was given this book by a dear friend. Bill Robinson, who's, who's no longer with us, Bill was an editor. And Bill was the grandfatherly type of guy who would smoke a pipe. And when he spoke, he paused. And you would you'd sit there and you'd wait because you knew there was some wisdom about to be spoken. You were captivated. You wanted to listen. You wanted to hear what he had to say. But this book, Doublespeak, is something that has been going on for a very long time in history. Let me read you part of the preface. The issue is not what we are doing to the language, but what we are doing with the language. The issue is not just whether subjects and verbs agree, but whether statements and facts agree. As Orwell also observed in his 1946 essay, the defense of the English language has nothing to do with correct grammar and syntax, which are of no importance so long as one makes one's meaning clear, or with having what is called a good prose style. What is 
above all needed is to let the meaning choose the word and not the other way about. Language is a tool. Just like any of the tools human beings have invented, like any tool, a knife, a screwdriver, a computer, a space satellite, language is used to do something, to achieve a goal. A knife can be used to carve a roast or carve a relative. A computer can be used to keep list of people who donate money to charity or keep list of people marked for summary execution by the government. A satellite can provide information on the weather or navigational directions for nuclear missiles to hit their targets. Language can be used to write the Constitution of the United States or to write the laws of apartheid, to write King Lear or pornography, to write the lyrics of John Keats or plans for winnable nuclear war. The fault lies not in the language, but in us, the creators and users of the language. Let me repeat that last statement. The fault lies not in the language, but in us, the creators and users of the language. So you see, when politicians get up there, you have to listen very clearly to the words that they use and the meanings that they're trying to convey. And many times you'll see what they're telling us and what they mean is not the same. Wake up America. Smell the hypocrisy.